What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. <laughs> yeah. Jermaine Dupree, king of the pedophiles, if you ask me, baby. The whole crazy drama around Diddy just got weirder. Cat Williams is now dropping some wild claims, saying Diddy and Jermaine D. Pry were up to some sketchy stuff, especially with young male artists. Like Criss Cross, you remember Criss Cross right? Well, now there's talk that Chris McCaddy Kelly's overdose. In 2013, might be linked to messed up stuff from his child star days. Even though rumors about Diddy's shady dealings have been around a new video of Cat Williams straight up calling them out has fans got. Ing nuts, seriously? What's the deal with this boy band back in the early 90s hip hop went on a wild ride with Criss Cross, that awesome duo making waves in the music scene? So you got Chris McDaddy Kelly and Chris Daddy Max Smith bringing crazy energy and a style totally their own. But before they hit the big time, their journey started in the lively city of Atlanta, Georgia. Chris Kelly, born on August 11, 1978 and Chris Smith born on January 10th, 1979, soaked up the musical vibes of Atlanta. Now imagine, he, this fate, steps in, and in 1991, these dudes catch the eye of the legendary producer Jermaine Dupree while they're rocking it at Lynx Mall in Atlanta. What did you see in those guys? When, when, when you first saw them at the mall, what did you see? Something that I still haven't seen today. Um, you know, um, they was in the mall. They were stars before I even came around. Hmm. And they was in the mall. They was ghetto stars. Yeah. You know, like for real. They was in the mall walking around. It was girls at the cookie company giving them free cookies. <laughs> <laughs> they was, they was, I, like, I, I'm telling you, I was standing there in the middle of the mall looking at this like, who the f is this? And I thought, like, I thought, you know, because I wasn't really big on Nickelodeon and all that when I was yeah. younger. So I thought this was like some kids from Nickelodeon or something. People were actually, you know, girls was acting wild about these little boys. Yeah. Dupree, with his eagle eye for talent, sees their potential and wastes no time signing them to his record label, So So Deaf, under Dupree's wing. Criss Cross kicks off their journey to stardom fast forward to 1992 and boom their debut album totally crossed out drops and blows up big time. Selling over 4 million copies, their standout single jump is everywhere topping the Billboard Hot 100 chart for a solid 8 weeks. The beat, the lyrics, and their killer chemistry have everyone hooked, but it's not just their mo- Music turning heads, these guys flipped the script on fashion by rocking their clothes backward. Yeah, you heard it right, that bold move becomes their trademark? and suddenly everyone's doing it crisscross became a cultural phenomenon, and their music videos, especially the high-energy jump vid, are on constant replay on MTV, and check this out in 1992. At the peak of their fame, they hit the road with none other than the king of pop Michael Jackson on his European tour, Talk About a Dream Come True, sharing time. He stage with MJ solidifies their place in music history, but wait, there's more that even dip their toes into the gaming world with a video game called Criss Cross Make My Video. Okay, it doesn't break sales records, but it shows how far their influence reaches these guys aren't just music sensation. They become icons inspiring a whole generation with their style and talent. Criss Cross opens doors for other young artists and leaves its mark on 90s hip-hop after the crazy success of Jump the World. Hungry for more from Criss Cross, this hit single not only rules the airwaves, but also makes history staying on top of the Billboard Hot 100 for a whopping eight weeks in 1993. The duo won the favorite new rap hip-hop artist at the AMAs and completely changed the musical landscape. Hey yo, first of all, we want to thank God for making all this happen. Next, we want to thank our fans, because we wouldn't be here today. For selling five million records too. Next, we want to thank our record label, Rough House, Columbia. Yo, check this out. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our man Jermaine Dupree, our producer, DJ Nab. Their infectious energy strikes a chord with fans of all ages, and suddenly Criss Cross is a household name. And don't even get me started on their backward pants that becomes a nationwide fashion craze after their massive hit jump crisscross is in the hot seat facing the challenge of keeping the
vibe alive and spicing up their sound while staying true to their unique style in 93. They dropped the bomb literally with their highly awaited second album, Da Bomb This Bad Boy, not only shows off their artistic growth but also locks in their spot in the music game Da Bomb, snags a platinum certification proving that Crisscross isn't a one-hit wonder but a legit force in hip-hop, the album has bangers like All Right and I'm Real that keep the energy high and show off Crisscross's knack for Creating tracks that stick with their fans, the success shouts loud and clear Crisscross is here to stay. But as their music evolves, so does their look. They make a bold move by ditching their signature backlit. Art clothing style marking a new chapter for the duo, they're all about showing off their growth as artists and breaking free from the old image now. Not everyone was vibing with this change fans, and critics had mixed feelings, but Crisscross wasn't sweating it. They were all about that artistic, Exploration and growth showing the world they were more than just a throwback style, they were the real deal. So in 96, Criss Cross threw down their third and final studio album, Young, Rich, and Dangerous The One had a more grown-up vibe spilling the beans on the duo journey through the music biz and their own life experiences, Young, Rich, and Dangerous, snagged the gold certification, making it crystal clear that Criss Cross had a solid spot in the industry. The album dropped some killer hits like Tonight. The night and live and die for hip-hop proving these guys could handle all kinds of them and styles they were flexing their versatility as artists no doubt, but you know how it goes despite their ongoing. On success, Criss Cross had to face some hurdles within the music scene. Hip-hop was evolving, new trends were popping up and these guys had to roll with the changes while keeping their unique sound intact. Some folks threw shade thinking they couldn't adapt to the new wave, but Criss Cross didn't let. It get to them they stayed strong, kept true to their roots, and kept making music that hit home with their diehard fans now. Now let's rewind a bit. Crisscross shot up like a rocket from the chance meetup. At Greenbrier Mall to signing with Rough House Records totally crossed out their debut album Blew Up Big Time, and with the smash hit jump they carved their names into music history. But as we're about to find out their journey wasn't all smooth sailing challenges and heartbreak were on the horizon as the 90s kept rolling crisscross hit some bumps in the road that messed with their groove. The scene was changing, and they struggled to keep up and stay cool in an industry always hunting for the neck. Big thing, their early success rode on their unique style and catchy tunes. But as time went on, the novelty wore off, and the whole backward pants thing started feeling played out to add to the mix their voices matured, making it tricky to keep that high-pitched sound that made them stars despite the Challenges they kept dropping music and hitting the road, but the hype wasn't the same packed arenas and chart top ERS turned into less than stellar album sales and half empty concert venues internal dr Ama and outside pressures threw more curveballs their way. The pressure to live up to their early success weighed heavy, putting a strain on relationships and sparking some creative struggles in 1995. They made one last splash with the gold certified album Young, Rich, and Dangerous. Showing off a more grown-up image after this success, Criss Cross decided to call it quits following the path of other early 90s groups. Interestingly, they got into this intense rap beef with another bad creation, a B.C. Eclat. Shuff, egos, and musical styles that fueled the Kitty Rap Wars fans took sides and the media ate up every bit of the drama both groups had their moment in the sun. But as music trends shifted, staying in the limelight got tough. BC had their struggles and Criss Cross faced a dip in fortune. Attempts to revive their careers fell short, and the H.A. changing music scene proved hard to navigate after the decline Criss Cross made a bit of noise with the 2013 reunion for the 20th anniversary of Sue Def fans re-hoping for a big comeback, but it turned out to be a one-time gig to dip their toes back in the water. The reunion was a nostalgic trip for fans, but it didn't lead to a long-lasting comeback. 